Come on, there we go. I got some, all right, here we go. It's gonna happen. It's gonna be. Don't make resolutions, make goals. Move forward. See how God leads you. If you eat a loaf of bread, then just enjoy your evening and start over the next day. It's all right. The whole idea of this sermon series is to get us started off with this new year, understanding that in the middle of our lives, in the middle of everything that we face, we carry around a lot of stuff, don't we? Don't we? We carry around a lot of worries. We worry about our jobs. We worry about our families. We worry about our coworkers. We worry about all kinds of things. We carry around stuff all the time. We have closets that need to be cleaned out. Amen? That can be a real closet or a metaphorical closet, all right? We have things that need to be thrown away. We have things that we need to focus on. We have priorities we need to put in place. And sometimes we just have to take a deep breath and that we are overstressed. We need to simplify our lives. Does anybody feel me this morning? You with me? My wife and I, the day after Christmas, we were packing up and getting ready to move my daughter across the other side of Texas out, out that way to serve God and follow her dreams. And that morning, we had to find luggage in our downstairs closet. Anybody got a downstairs closet? Anybody got one of them? Staircase, so it's deep. You know what I'm talking about? Like it goes all the way back. So we started pulling stuff out. And we discovered, we actually discovered a piece of the ark back in the back. <laughs> we didn't know we had. We, we had no, it was crazy. We pulled stuff. We found some of the kids' snow gear that they wore playing in snow when the mittens were like this big. And we didn't know they were back in the back of the closet. It was crazy. So in the middle of trying to get packed up and, and get everything ready to move, we decided to declutter our closet. In the middle of decluttering our closet, we discovered some luggage that needed to be thrown away. We discovered some clothes that decided to get molded in the back of the closet. We discovered, we discovered mittens and hats and sleeping bags. I, we have like nine sleeping bags. I don't know why, but we found them in the back of the closet. We found, so that process of decluttering, it was kind of funny, because by the time we cleaned everything out, took what we were going to take to Goodwill, got everything reset, my wife and I just kind of looked at each other and went, whew, feels good. Feels good to simplify and declutter just a little bit, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Yeah. Last week, we decided to start off a series, I love to start off every year as a church body, gathering together and remembering the body, the blood of Christ. We did the Lord's Supper together. We talked about a verse in the book of Matthew that says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these other things will be added to you. There was an understanding of last week that what comes first. See if you remember. Kingdom. There we go. The kingdom comes first. That's what we're about. That's who we are. I pray that that will be a mindset inside of I got to thinking about this as I was putting this together a while back, and there are a couple of words that I... For that? You just carried your junk right into... Overwhelmed and exhausted. A lot of us fit in between those two words. A lot of us feel like if, if we were honest, I know we've all chosen like one word statements. I'm going to be this going to be that I'm going to do this but it always falls back to that I am overwhelmed and I am exhausted many of the words that we use seem to us we feel like we have to go to bed at night watching the news find 
supposed to like. We, we feel like we're overwhelmed in everything that we are. And then because we're so overwhelmed, we find ourselves absolutely exhausted and we've got nothing left to give. So how do you simplify overwhelmed and exhausted? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a few minutes and then I'm going to jump into some scripture this morning. And we are going to go word and verse by verse and see something that Jesus is going to teach us. But let me, let me just share with you a couple of things that God laid on my heart this week. Because this is what I discover. And this is just about me. It's probably not about you. This is just about me. But here's some signs when I am depleted. You ever felt depleted? I'm irritable. Anybody else? Don't raise your hands. You'll get in trouble. It's kind of weird. You're the preacher that always asks questions. All right, anyway. Here's some signs and that you're exhausted and overwhelmed. You're irritable. Um, insomnia. You don't sleep well. Uh, how about this one? You're over. You just don't live on your budget. You just go, oh, fine. I'll just get it. You're overeating. Yeah, all right, just checking. All right. All right. Some of you, it shows. And I'm looking in the mirror. I shaved some of my goatee off, and I discovered three more chins. So I'm, I'm, I'm good. Um, and then another one that is kind of a recognition when I'm depleted, and it's a word that, um, I don't know, it kind of stinks. Escaping. You try to escape from reality. There's people that escape from reality with... I don't know, alcohol, drugs, pornography, just taking naps when you don't need to take naps. Three hours before you realize that you've been scanning your social media for three hours. You just escape from reality. Well, what do you do when you're overwhelmed and exhausted? There's a, there's a passage of scripture I want to share with you this morning. It's actually in three gospels. And John read the description of a young man by the name of John Mark in a letter that he wrote that God used an incredible way for him to spend time with Peter in order to write this book. So if you got a Bible, I want you to turn. It's the second book in the New Testament, the book of Mark. You can turn there. You can look on your smartphone, your dumb phone. You can look on the screen. You can look on a tablet, whatever you want to do. But I just want you to put something in your hands that shows you these verses for me this morning, okay? Mark chapter 4. And I, I, I want to just read a story to you, and we're going to kind of break it down and see if we can understand that when we are exhausted and overwhelmed, we're, we're, we're not real good. Matter of fact, it kind of begs this question. Are you at your best when you're overwhelmed and exhausted and emotionally drained, or are you at your best when you are well-rested and emotionally filled? I think the majority of us would say, I am at my best when I'm filled up and well-rested. Well, let's read this story and let's see just kind of two different viewpoints of overwhelmed and exhausted in this story. Are you with me? If you're with me, say I'm with you. Cool. Mark chapter 4, verse 35. Here's how it's written. It says this, that day when evening came. Now, let me stop for a second. Y'all know I like to dig in as we go along. Those words, that day, if I can give you the, kind of the pre-story, the backstory to this, if you go all the way back to the beginning of Mark chapter 4, you'll find Jesus teaching. He's teaching right on the edge of the Sea of Galilee. Maybe you know the story. I'm not sure whether you do or not, but, but Jesus is teaching and, and the crowd is pushing in. So he steps out into one of the boats that's along the shore and kind of backs up a bit. So he is standing in this boat and he's teaching people. He's been teaching them for hours upon hours. Imagine he's starting to get exhausted. He's starting to get overwhelmed. I can imagine that the disciples that are around him by this point in the day are a little bit tired of doing ministry and caring, caring for people tired of people trying to find a bathroom and who wants to eat and what's going to go in which direction and, and, and are the people hot enough, are they cold enough, are they happy enough, are they being fed enough, whatever it may be, that was that day. So that's the pre-story and here we find Jesus again. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side, the other side of the lake. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was. Now those words, just as he was, basically means that Jesus was standing in the boat teaching. 
as he was. He didn't, he didn't change his clothes. He didn't take a shower. He didn't eat a snack. He just said, let's go to the other side. So as they were going along, just as he was, in the boat, there was also other boats that came along with him. Maybe some of the disciples, maybe the, some of the people that wanted to follow along with Jesus. And here's what we find. We find in verse 30, 37, a furious squall. Do you know what a furious squall is? That's when you're toddling. Your day planned perfectly, but your boss had other ideas. That's when everything in your life you think is working great, and wham, something comes up against you. In their particular case, it was a pretty nasty storm that came up. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped, nearly covered. I love the writing of... of IV in this where it says it was comp- just about submerged and swamped over with the storm and the, the overwhelmed and all the exhaustion and everything of the day is Jesus was in the stern. Anybody, any boat people here, you know where the stern is? All right, stern in the front or the back? Y'all don't know, do you? All right. We live in the mountains. I don't know. There's a boat in my yard. We planted some flowers in it. I don't know. I'd say it. All right. Stern is the back of the boat. Stern is in the back. So what they're saying is this. Jesus was in the stern. There's a storm going on. The overwhelmness of life. The exhaustion of life. The disciples are rowing and working with everything they can possibly do to get to the other side. Because there is no way that you want to be in the middle of the Sea of Galilee when the storms of life are messing up. And and when the water's breaking over and the boat's almost swamped. But here we find Jesus on a cushion. I can just Disciples woke him, and they said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Now, I don't know if you miss this or not, but he was in the boat. (laughs) Jesus was asleep in the boat, and they were worried if they were going to die. I wonder if there's something in there for us. See, the problem is we live our lives so overwhelmed and so exhausted that, let's, let's do this, all right? Yeah, that'll work. All right. This, this is your life. <laughs> it's just that, okay? Boop, there it goes. It's gone. All right, there goes the day. All right, it's carpet, we're good. <laughs> like I'm not going to stay in the carpet. All right, anyway. So here, here's, our, here's where we find ourselves. And see, here's what happens. We're going along in life. Doop, 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 doop. Christmas dinner, everything was great. Doop, 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 doop. And then all of a sudden, wham, something happens. We're walking through life, everything's going great. I've gone to work today, wham, time for a demotion at work. You don't get to keep your job. We're walking through life, everything's gone good at work. You get home, your spouse says, I don't think I want to be married anymore. Wham. You probably didn't want to sit on the front row today, just in case you guys were wondering, all right? I got two more water bottles. This is going to be a long illustration, all right? Um, here's something really interesting. This, this will be fun. Let's, let's be a classroom for a minute, okay? Things in life are going. Life's getting nervous. Life's getting shaky. I'm getting overwhelmed. I'm getting tired. I don't know what to do. Everything in my life is going in different directions. Let me ask you a very simple question. Why is there water coming out of this bottle? Come on, help me out. You're a classroom. Why is there water? Do you know why there's water coming out of it? Because there was water in it. Now, you you thought I was going to be really deep, but that's not really deep, all right? You could say, well, there's water coming out because you're shaking it and you're giving the illustration of all the pressures in life and everything difficult that's going on. That's why there's water coming out. Well, what if I'd have put gasoline in this? <laughs> Y'all really wouldn't have sit on the front row. That's all right. That's how we get rid of disgruntled church members. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. I'm just mad. Y'all are all safe. All right, you're good. All right. I like all of y'all. We're fine. See, here's the thing. We spend our lives putting things inside of us that we think only comes out when life gets difficult. Well, the reason that the things are coming out is because of what we put in there. Then we find ourselves, 
completely depleted. We're exhausted. We're overwhelmed. We don't know what to do. We find ourselves going back to old, let me use the celebrate recovery terminology, to our old hurts, our old habits, our old hangups. We find ourselves going back to things that at one time in life brought us satisfaction and now we have gotten so overwhelmed with life that when the things come up against us, they can't help but come out because that's what we've allowed inside of us. And we've forgotten one simple thing. If you've given your life to Jesus, he's in the boat. He hasn't gone anywhere. He hasn't moved out. We're worried. We're exhausted. We're overwhelmed. We've forgotten how to rest. And if we're going to actually simplify our lives this year and not go back to those things or not choose those things, not be filled up with the things of life that continually mess with us, continually wear us out, because I'm going to tell you something about life. Things happen! But it's all a matter of what's... Oh, thank you. (laughs) That life was pretty good. Um, It's all a matter of what we're putting in there. Let me read the rest of the story to you, and then I want to share with you a couple of principles. In verse 39 of Mark chapter 4, I should have brought a towel. All right. Verse 39 of Mark chapter 4, it says this about Jesus. He rebuked the wind, and he said to the waves, gosh, catch these words. Please catch these words. Be still. Now I know growing up story in this gospel or other gospels as well, and you get a feeling that Jesus stood up and waves quiet to be still in his best kingdom whatever it may be. I don't know. We don't get the accurate tone of his voice. if he got out of the cushioned place in the stern and stood up and stretched a little and he looked at the waves and went, huh, I remember creating this water. Oh, there's that wind. Man, the wind's strong. We, we have this perspective, and I don't know if it's true or not. Please don't feel like I'm trying to mess up the Bible. But I often wonder if he didn't just step up to the bow of the boat and go, hey, water. I was trying to sleep. Hey, waves, you're you're overwhelming my guys. They're exhausted. They're overwhelmed. They're not filled up with the right things, and you're wearing them out. Then the wind died down. And it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, why why are you guys so afraid? Why, Why are you so afraid? Do you still not have any faith? They were terrified. And they asked each other, who is this? That even the wind and the waves obey him. This must really be him. I wonder in our lives today, so overwhelmed so exhausted so emotionally drained and and the stuff that's in our lives is can't help but be shaken out and making messes everywhere because we've forgotten that God does not call us to live a complex life Jesus is actually the one who said deny yourself take up your cross and follow me Jesus is actually the one that said, take my burden on you, because my yoke is easy. Let me be there. Don't forget. (laughs) 
let's do this. I, I, was, I was kind of praying through my days this week and actually had just a cool privilege to, to be part of a funeral yesterday and speak at that funeral. And God brought this back to my heart again. And, and um, Psalm 23. You're all familiar with it, right? I know you are. What do we do when we're so overwhelmed and so exhausted and so worn out and so just... Look at Psalm 23. Let me take a couple of minutes and then I'm going to be done this morning if you can just grab a hold of what Jesus is teaching. You know the verses. I feel a little elementary telling them to you. It says, I not want. Do you realize that if we spent more time recognizing that our shepherd has us, he's in the boat? He's guiding us. He's leading us. It will allow us to rest instead of being overwhelmed and exhausted all the time. The Lord, come on, say it with me. You ready? Let's do it. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. We made that simple recognition that He really is our shepherd. He really hasn't left us. We really can rest in him. We don't have to be overwhelmed. We don't have to be exhausted. We can, now listen, you ought to work. You ought to be tired. The person that you work for, owe oh, them a full day's work. Go work for them, get tired, come home and rest. But don't ever forget, you got a shepherd. He's in the boat. Verse 2. He makes me lie down in green pastures. And he leads me. Let, let, me, let me get you to ask yourself a question, okay? What are the things that drain you from being able to lie down in the green pastures that Jesus has provided for you? Where are they? What are the things going in this year, going into this new decade, this new time in your life that you say, hey, pastor, I would love on my heart. This is the thing on my mind. This is the thing that I can't set aside. What are the things that are keeping you from allowing your shepherd to help you to lie down in green pastures? What are the things that fill you and allow you? You ready? You want to know why? This stuff right here is coming out. One more time. You want to know why it's coming out? Because it was in there. So what would it look like if instead of the things that are overwhelming and exhausting you, you begin to put things in there that build you up? Put people around you that begin to speak things into you about Jesus, about the good future and the things that he has prepared for you. Now, I understand sometimes it feels like life sucks, then you die. Sometimes it feels like things are just too bad. But let me tell you how to fill yourself up with the things that God wants you to have. It's called resting in Jesus. Allowing him to lead you beside still waters, to lead you into green pastures. The next verse in Psalm 23 says, He restores my soul. Have you ever felt restored? I'm not a heavy sleeper. I don't think I really ever have been. Now, my wife will tell you I can fall asleep faster than any human being on the face of the earth. And I'm pretty confident I can. All it takes is one moment of stillness, I'm out. My problem is I can't stay asleep. And I've actually shared with our staff that my goal for this year is to rest. When I go to bed, I want to sleep. I'm working on it. But what I've begun to learn is when I sleep and I rest, both physically and allow my mind to rest, look what he does. 
He restores my soul. And then it goes on and it says, he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And I think maybe, maybe just maybe, one of the reasons that we find ourselves so often overwhelmed, exhausted, and emotionally spent, maybe it's that one little word in Psalm 23, 3 that says, he leads me in the paths of righteousness. You see, as long as you have a pulse, you have a purpose. (laughs) And you have a path that you're walking down. But here's my question. Is to get back there to the auditorium to the sound booth. I should probably walk right down here. Just stay straight and go right that direction. But what happens if I turn just this way a little bit? Where am I going to end up? over some of you. If I turn just, you see, the paths that God is leading us just because they're for his name's sake. Because he is wanting to remind you that your life is not about you, it's about him. And he wants to lead you. He wants to take you to where you need to be for him. He doesn't make a mistake. The difficulties, the thing in your life that you allow to overwhelm you and exhaust you and emotionally fill you up, those are things that God is sitting there going, I'm your shepherd. I'm in the boat. I'm with you. Just walk the path with me. I, I can't not just read all of Psalm 23 because it's there. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, and your rod and your staff, they comfort me. There's something about verse 4 that always gets me. One of my professors, when I went to Bible school, a sweet man who's with Jesus now, I heard him preach multiple funerals while he was alive. And he used to take verse 4 of Psalm 23 and make this statement. The shadow of a dog can't bite you, the shadow of a car can't hit you, and the shadow of death can't touch you if you are one of Jesus' children. It's just a shadow. Verse 5, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. That anointing is healing. Verse 6, surely goodness, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And here's a recognition that we need. We are at our best when we rest in Jesus. We are at our best. Pastor, I don't want to be overwhelmed. I don't want to be exhausted. I don't want these things to keep knocking me sideways. This this seems so complicated, but yet it's so easy. Rest. Go go back to Jesus and rest. Getting filled with the things that he says will keep you in the paths of righteousness. We're going to walk through some of those in the weeks to come in this series. I encourage you to find your place. Listen, we've got Bible studies that are going on around our church. We've got life groups that are going on. We've got huddle groups. There is no excuse for anyone in this church to be doing life alone. If you do life alone, if you are trying to walk through this life by yourself, it is of your own choice. There are too many ways you can be involved here. So will you...
ask you to stand if you can for a second. No big formal invitation. I'm not going to ask you to come forward unless you just choose to. You're welcome to pray. In the front of this building, there's no magical powers up here, but people like to pray and like to commit themselves and take steps. But I'm, I'm not going to ask you to do that today. In just a minute, I'm going to finish. Jeremy's playing back behind us just for some mood music. And in a minute, I'm going to pray. And when I'm done, Miss Sabrina is going to come out here and share some very important information with you about things happening around our church. But here's what I want to do. I want to make a commitment before you that I am going to allow Jesus to guide my paths this year. That he's in the boat. When I feel overwhelmed, when I feel exhausted, my commitment is to turn around and go, I know he's here. He's got me. I'm going to allow him to be my shepherd. I'm going to follow him in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I'm not going to let shadows scare me. I'm going to allow him to prepare a table. I'm going to eat in the green pastures and walk beside the still waters. That's me. What about you? What's your desire for this year? What's your desire in simplifying in your life? See, it simply starts by a path of following Jesus. Maybe this morning you're a person that's with us today and this whole Jesus thing, this whole church thing may be new to you. Maybe you made a commitment this year to say, I should go to church more. So you came this morning, and that's a good thing, great thing. But this whole Jesus thing is kind of new to you. See, here's what Jesus did. He gave his life. Nobody took his life. He gave his life on the cross for us. He said, my death, my blood will cover the sins of all of humanity. All you've got to do is believe and give your life to me and trust me. And yeah, we use a lot that that starts with a prayer, and it does. It starts with a prayer and an acknowledgement of saying, God, I need you in my life. I am a sinner. I am messed up. And without you, I can't make it. Not, not, not a month, not a week, not a day, not a minute, not a second. I need you. I believe that you are God, that you died for my sins. I confess my sin before you. I'm asking God. you. That's the first decision. And then it begins following Jesus from there on. Maybe this morning you need to make that decision. I just spelled it out for you pretty simply. It's a confession and an acknowledgement that he's God and it's giving your life to him. We have all kinds of ways. I'm going to hang out after church this morning. After Miss Sabrina's done talking, I'm going to step out here and just hang out. You want to come talk to me? Let's pray together. You want to stop by our new here desk right out these doors to my left, to your right, and say, I need what the pastor was talking about this morning. There's somebody there that will talk to you. There's these connect cards that are sitting all over the chairs with those connect cards. There's a place on there that says, I would like to take my next step today by beginning a relationship with Jesus. Put your phone number, your, we can text you, we can email you, whatever, and follow up with you. Start the year by giving your life to Jesus. Now, second part. You're a Christian this morning. Tony, that all sounds really, really simple, doesn't it? That's why we called it Simplify. <laughs> it's hard because I'm struggling. I thought, but I'm struggling. Well, guess what? Left him back. He's there. He hasn't gone anywhere. He wants to guide you. Simple resources around here at Living Water. Back there on the back tables is our talk it over guide. And it's, it's so simple. And I don't know why you don't use it. It's just simple. I use it. My wife uses it. It's simple. It's, it's getting a person or two together. There's some ways that you can have a conversation with people that you can get into. And then back on about the second or third page is time. Now you're going, hey, wait a minute, isn't there seven days in a week? Yeah, but I'm going to give you five days. Hopefully you can figure out the other two, all right? So that's on there. Every single week we give you an opportunity. It's written on here, some little simple scripture verse to remember and to memorize. 
I think this week I put on there, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That's where you start your year. That's where you simplify. I'm a follower of Jesus and I need to get back to guide you. He's your shepherd and he's with you. Pick those up if you need Jesus this morning. If you've got a prayer request, hey, we take these connect cards every single week and I encourage our church, those of you that are regular attenders and owners here at Living Water, please use those connect cards. That's how we stay connected. Um, we pray for those every single week. Those go out to our elders, to our deacons. They pray for you. If there's any way you and help you, put it on that card. Let us know. I'm here. You can come talk to me. You can talk to our other staff. That's fine. But sometimes you just need to write a note. Please. I want to pray for you this morning. Is that cool? Let, let's just be honest. We all need to die just a little bit, don't we? Nod your head this morning. Yeah, we do, don't we? So I want to pray for you. And then when I'm done praying, Miss Sabrina's going to close us out. Jesus, I love you this morning. I just want to say thank you that you've never been surprised. <laughs> there, there's nothing, nothing that snuck up on you. Not a year that rolled by on a calendar where you went, oh wow, it's already been. God, you're not limited by time or space or matter. You just know all, you're in all. You can use the overwhelmness and the tiredness and the exhaustion and the depletedness of our lives. God, we just got to get on your path. We got to remember that you're with us and we got to take those steps. There's so many ways to do that. But God, it just starts with that first step of saying, I'm going to start following Jesus, wherever that is. God, you gave us a thought, a theme, a vision here at Living Water that says we will accept you right where you are, but we will refuse to leave you there. That means that we as a church, we got to get a little messy. We got to jump into some difficult things with people. God, give us strength to be able to do that. Help us, those of us who are growing and walking and staying on that path, Lord, help us to dig even deeper to build ourselves up, as the book of Jude says, to remind ourselves that it is our job, our responsibility to get into people's lives and bring them to you. God, if there's one person here today who doesn't know you, I pray that they can't leave today until they've talked to someone, until they've given their lives to you, they've started it with an acknowledgement of needing you, and they continue a conversation. God, will you make 2020 the very best year that Living Water has ever seen? God, will you build people in this church this year? Will you keep us on the paths of righteousness for your name's sake? We're going to trust you, and we're going to simplify. God, I pray that every individual in here this morning, ones that are watching on Facebook and can't be here, God, I pray that they make an acknowledgement in their heart today that it is the kingdom first this year, and that's what they're going to be about. Jesus, use us and help us to be who you want us to be in this coming year. In your name we pray.